Hello friends, Tom Downey here for NFL Daily, taking you through all the latest Green Bay Packers rumors. First up, is Justin McCray going to start at guard? I'm going to give it three Goodell heads for now because as of right now, who else is there really? The Packers coaching staff has been, has been praising McCray in OTAs. They didn't bring back Jahari Evans. That makes him kind of the clear favorite to start at guard for Green Bay. And we'll look at kind of the rest of their depth chart right now at guard, and it's pretty thin. I mean, they drafted Cole Madison. Kofi, I guess, has some ability. Lucas Patrick is there. But there's not a whole lot going on at guard for Green Bay. So as of right now, yeah, I think McCray is their front runner to start at guard. Maybe things change, but I'd be very surprised if, 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 they, if the Packers didn't start McCray unless they add a guard, which is an idea that I'm actually okay with. Look, I like Jahari Evans. I know he's older than you would like in a starter, but I thought he played pretty well last year. I wouldn't mind bringing him back or bringing in another guard, but I think Green Bay really wants to let Justin McCray get a chance to be the long-term starter at right guard. Next up, time for some Aaron Rodgers rumors. $110 million guaranteed. Is that what he's going to get? We'll give it three heads for now. This comes to us from Jason Lockenforna, who said he was talking with an agent, and they both thought Rodgers was going to get at least $110 million guaranteed when he signs his new deal. Now, Rodgers has two years left on his current contract, and I think you guys will agree with me on this. Aaron's the best quarterback in the NFL. We should definitely be paid like the best quarterback, but if he gets $110 million, all of a sudden you got a big, big, fat contract here, and that would put him well above the highest paid NFL quarterback based on a per-year number here. Here's the per-years. Here's the guaranteed as well. That's an extra $10 million per year guaranteed. Now, Ryan jumped Stafford by nearly eight. And in reality, look, Rodgers is better than all those quarterbacks. I'd say by a pretty significant margin because he's just so good. 110 is a lot, but for the best quarterback in the NFL, it's probably worth it. I think Rodgers knows he can ask for almost anything he wants from Green Bay because what are they going to do, say no and start Deshaun Kaiser? I don't think so. You do not let Aaron Rodgers leave your franchise because he's the best quarterback out there. Right, if you guys are wondering what the heads are, here's what they mean. Zero heads, it's fake news, don't buy it. One head, a small shred of truth, but eh, it's not quite that yet. Two heads means people are talking firmly in that rumor category. Three heads means it's more probable than not. It's pretty likely, but not quite set in stone. Four heads, fake news, count it. Number three, did, the Air, did Aaron Rodgers ask the Falcons GM to get the Matt Ryan deal done? Yeah, four heads on this one. That's what the Falcons GM says. He says that they met at the airport during the Super Bowl, and Rodgers walks up to him <laughs> and said, we don't know each other that well, but just get this deal done with Matt first so I can get on with my life. Because Aaron Rodgers knew he wasn't getting his contract locked up until Matt Ryan signed his. So I, I find this very funny, very humorous, but it does indicate that, yeah, Rodgers is going to get paid more than Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan set the NFL mark at $30 million per year, surpassing Cousins, Jimmy G, Stafford, Breeze, and Derek Carr in the process. If you're, if you're Aaron Rodgers, are you asking for $35 million or more? Like, you are going to get paid in a massive, massive way, and that would not at all be any type of surprise if you're Aaron Rodgers. Look, best quarterback in the NFL, you have to absolutely pay him like one. It's a no-brainer. Give Aaron Rodgers 33, 34, 35, whatever he wants. He deserves it. If it's $110 million, do it. 115, do it. Make it happen. You gotta pay Aaron Rodgers if you're Green Bay, because as we saw last year, that offense does not do well without him. All right, on to our next rumor. How about Adrian Peterson to Green Bay? So we've heard this one in the past, but it's come back up again because Adrian Peterson says he wouldn't mind playing for the Packers, but it's just the one head. Technically, it could happen, but if we're basing it only on right now fake news because why would Green Bay bring in Aaron or bring in Adrian Peterson? They have Jamal Williams, they have Ty Montgomery, they have Aaron Jones. They don't need another running back to make it a, a four-dead attack. No, they're going to stick with three there. Williams, Jones, Montgomery, and someone, don't pay too much attention to the order right now, are your top three guys. I think they'll all get work. They'll all kind of rotate in, in a committee. But it, the only way Peterson comes in is if there's an injury. That's why it's just the one head. It could happen, but I'd be very surprised based on the current Packers roster with no injuries. But I do want to know from you guys, who should start for the Packers at running back? Is it Aaron Jones? Is it Williams or is it Ty Montgomery? I think they'll all split and it's going to be a committee. I think you can see a situation where, you know, maybe Ty starts one game, then it's Jamal, then it's Aaron Jones. They kind of rotate. I think it'll be a committee if everyone's healthy. But they all bring different strengths and weaknesses to Green Bay. Overall, 
I do like Green Bay's depth chart at running back because they're deep, even if they don't have a true dynamic number one guy at the spot. All right, next up is Brian Balaga on the roster bubble. I wanted to get this one fake news. I changed my mind late and went to just the one head because if he's never healthy again, well then, yeah, I guess I could see it happen if he gets hurt again. Maybe Green Bay says, you know what, we're done. He's just never going to be able to stay healthy. But as of right now, I would be flabbergasted if the Green Bay Packers cut Balaga as 24-7 sports suggested because why would they do that? When he's healthy, Balaga's a really good offensive lineman. David Bakhtiari's out there at left tackle. Jason Spriggs has not become the guy they were hoping for. They got some decent up behind Balaga and Bakhtiari overall. But there's no reason to cut Balaga if you're Green Bay because you want him as one of your starting tackles. Now, if he's never healthy again, that's when you can have that discussion. That's why it's the one head. But I'd be really surprised if that ended up happening for Green Bay. Next up is Dimitri Goodson wowing at OTAs. Three heads on this one, and it comes to us from Aaron Rodgers. Unprompted, by the way, Rodgers brought up Goodson, said he's made some plays already during the two days of OTAs. That's a good sign for Goodson, who I do think makes the Packers roster despite a drastic overhaul of their cornerback depth chart this offseason. Now, because no matter what, Goodson's going to be a key part of the special teams. Look at their top five guys. Kevin King, Alexander, Josh Jackson, Williams and House, I all kind of think are going to make the roster. But if Goodson makes it as the sixth guy, that gives you good depth and some special team abilities. The bad news is for Green Bay, that does not bode well for one Quentin Rollins, former second-round pick out of Miami, Ohio, my alma mater. Maybe Q moves to safety, but I think Rollins is a prime trade candidate for Green Bay, especially if Goodson continues to, to thrive during OTAs on both special teams and at the cornerback spot. All right, folks, follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny for more Packers and NFL coverage, and subscribe to the channel for more NFL coverage throughout the offseason. Until then, we'll see you next time.